everyone. This video is a bit different for the Private Practice Grow Club channel, where I usually share tips, tools, tutorials, and interviews more specifically for health professionals interested in private practice. But this video is more for the benefit of all my fellow HPCSA registered health professionals. With regards to the newly launched self-service online portal and the newly required CPD upload feature. Now, I want to say upfront that I'm in no way representing the HPCSA or any of the professional boards, nor is this video intended to be any form of legal advice. I'm simply expressing my personal views and experiences in the hopes that it will help you because I've been seeing on various platforms so many of you struggling and feeling frustrated by this new change and I feel for you so that is why I decided to make this video if we haven't met yet I'm Dustin Abrahams I'm the, an occupational therapist and I'm the founder of the private practice growth club now as you know in order to legally practice your profession in South Africa you must be registered with the health professions council of South Africa and in order to maintain that registration you need to renew your license year on year now, the role of the HPCSA is to protect the public and guide us, us as professionals by ensuring that we uphold and maintain professional and ethical standards within our profession. Now, one of those standards is to remain relevant in our knowledge and our skills as healthcare is continuously evolving and changing. And so for the benefit of the public and our patients, we must ensure that we are always evolving and changing and improving in our clinical and ethical knowledge and skills. So for this reason, we are required to earn a certain amount of continuous professional development points or CPD points, also referred to as continuous education units or CEUs. This is something worldwide in health professions councils across the world, but everybody manages this process differently and has the requirements of how you fulfill that um, process is different. So till now, this has been monitored through a process of random audits. We as individuals are required to keep our CPD uh, track of or record, record of our CPD activities in order to be able to submit them if we are ever selected for, for audit. Now, I don't know about you, but I found this process to be really messy, totally of my own doing, because I wasn't always on top of keeping track of my of my um, or record of my activities, or I wasn't very really good at organizing and storing my my C CPD certificates in one place, so that it was easy to find when I was audited. Um, I, I once was audited and I found it such time consuming schlep to sift through all of my emails looking for CPD certificates. And even now with this new process and I had to upload my CPD activities, I had to go through so much emails and like do filters to make sure that it doesn't go beyond 2019 and the two year, 24 month mark and so on and so forth, just in order to make sure that I had all the relevant stuff. So granted, there were a few online providers. I know people have mentioned um, platforms where you can actually upload or um, your, and I know with Otaza as well, if you do courses through Otaza, it's quite easy when you add in the code, but I haven't always done that immediately. And so um, some of these platforms even make it easy to submit by a click of a button. But from a legislative point of view, besides being able to keep track of your CPD activities, the random audits were not really sufficient in, in, in ensuring that all health professionals were actually adhering to this legal requirement. Now, my personal opinion is that the new changes and developments to the website has long been needed. The introduction of the online payment system uh, a while back, I think it was 2017, I stand to be corrected, um, that it was a really welcome development. Um, although I do know that a lot of health professionals were reporting that they weren't even able to use um, the system and didn't really get the support or help that they need via the various support channels for information or assistance to help them actually get that going. So a lot of people are still playing, paying by EFT. But for those of us who have been able to pay online and who prefer that method, it's so much more quicker and more efficient. You get your practice, uh, your digital uh, registration card immediately. So it's a step in the right direction. Now, I, so I do, yes, there are lots of improvements that need to be made with the system, but at least we are moving in that direction. With any change comes obstacles, and particularly when the change happens at scale, 
Now there are thousands of HBCS registered health professionals, so there are bound to be issues, especially when technology is involved. And often it's not the change that is the issue. It's the way that the change is implemented. And unfortunately, I do feel that the way these recent changes have been rolled out was really lacking, um, in particular when it came to communication. Not only was communication untimely, it was and still is lacking. There are many unanswered questions with no clear way to access the answers. And any tech company will tell you when there's a major rollout or update to any form of technology, the most important part is actually the customer support, the post support that happens after the rollout happens. And this is where the HPCSA, it seems, is failing dismally with, re with reports from many people saying they are unable to get the response telephonically, they must hold on for hours, um, they can't, they're not getting a response by email, and now they're panicking because the deadline for renewal as, the date, as of the date of this recording on the 30th of April is today, it's upon us. Now, there has been an update um, I think as I saw the update today um, when I was preparing to record this video, that the deadline for uploading CPD activity has been extended to the 31st of May. So that's great news. We do have an additional month. So I really hope that recording this video is going to help you guys. Uh, because in this video, I'm going to take you through a screen share of the website and the new portal and answer some of the commonly asked questions that I've seen come up about it. And at the end of the video, I also want to share with you a very important additional development regarding CPD that you must brace yourselves for. So be sure to stay till the end of that because you don't want to miss it. Again, HPCSA hasn't been really very communicative about these changes and because and although it's not going to be happening around the corner it would be good to engage us as the important stakeholders who it's going to affect on what these changes are fortunately myself as an occupational therapist i do belong to otaza i'm a member of otaza so i already heard about this through one of the webinars um, but this should be something that the hbcsa should be communicating so let's get into it Okay, so we are now on the homepage of the Health Professions Council of South Africa. And what I've been hearing and seeing in online is a lot of people complaining that they are struggling to find their way around the website and find what they need. For the majority of us, we don't visit the HPCSA website until this time of year for one of two reasons. We either want to renew our license by paying our fees, and we want to find out how much the fees are, or we want to pay online, or we want to find the bank details, or we want to find out something about CPD. So the, the problem with this is that the, the people who ever designed the website, they didn't really take into account what is the user journey and what people are predominantly using it for. And I think it is difficult because the HPCSA serves both the public and the practitioner. So there is many, lots of information they need to cover. What I would say a quick change they can make to their website is to get rid of this slider. It's a stupid slider, it's pointless, and it's kind of redundant because it's just repeating everything that you can find up here in the uh, menu bar. What they really need to do is move this whole section up down here, which is the quick click links and popular links up top here, because this is perfect. This is exactly what people are wanting. You either want to complain, search the register if you're in the public, or you want to renew online or find out something about CPD. So that information really should replace this whole slider. This slider is useless. But anyway, the point of this video is not to do a website review on the HPCSA's website, um, but just to. Uh, but I wanted to mention that because I want to acknowledge what your frustrations were. So when you log down, go down here, you will see that there are some quick links, which is around registration. Um, fees, online services, CPD. So if you are wanting to pay your fees, a lot of people will go down on here onto fees. Um, and then, but where you want to go, when it, and or you want to find out how to upload your CPD, you're going to go to CPD. If you click on CPD, it's not going to take you to any portal. It's just going to provide you with information about what CPD is and things like that. So what you are wanting to do in order to access this new portal is to go to online services. Once you click on there, it's going to take you to a page like this where it says the different professional boards. And again, these the, the, the way this page has been set up, it's really like this, this 
this page here is not really, um, it's more an informational page to give you access to your professional boards if you need information about your specific profession. It's more of a support portal. portal. Um, if you click on online services, which intuitively is what I think most people are doing, um, it takes you to this page, which also is not where you need to be. So that is, I think, what causes a lot of frustrations because people are going to where they intuitively think they should go um, and it's not where they need to be. Um, so where you actually need to do is go in and log in or sign up. Now, I will state that an important thing to note is that you need to have been registered as an online, on, online user for online services in order to actually log into this portal. If you have never ever accessed online services and you've always just paid your fees by EFT and never actually logged on online, then you most likely won't have an account. So then you wanna go ahead and create an account and it will take you to this page where it asks you, are you a registered practitioner? Now, I went through this process a few times to kind of see what are some of the issues that I think people might be coming up with. And I suspect that a lot of you are assuming you are a registered practitioner because we are registered practitioners, right? And so you would be selecting yes. And it would take you to this where it says, use this link to request your username or reset password and use this link to contact support team or account related assistance. But this is where there's also an issue with the way the website has been laid out on the language they used. When they're asking, are you a registered practitioner, what they are actually asking you is, are you registered to the website? Are you a practitioner registered on the online services? And as I said earlier, in order to access the online services, you need to have been previously registered. So if you've never registered on the website, you don't want to click yes here because it's going to take you to this. And I think if it takes you to this, you're going to try and click these things and it's going to cause deactivation and all kinds of things. What you want to rather do is say no. Once it says you say no, it will take you to the page to say continue creating an account. And this is where you can then put in your email address and all your information, um, your ID number, your passport, and then it will ask you for your username. Now you can actually specify, it says it's a private username that you use to log into your account. I would suggest you use your ID number as your username because it's just easy to remember, but it does say that you can also use your email address if you want. Problem with emails, unless you're using a Gmail account that you know it's never gonna change, it's probably best not to use an email, but if you want to use an email as a way to also remember, that's also fine. Um, and on that topic, I think when you get to this um, section where it asks you for um, uh, your email address, where is it now? First name, ID, ID number, pass. Oh, yeah, on top. Make sure, again, that you don't use like a work email address. So like I'm not going to use my work email address, which is a domain email. Use a Gmail account or whatever other um uh, email service provider you use that is more that is something that you're going to keep forever like your personal email address because what happens is if you change your email address you're not going to be receiving any uh, uh, communication from the HPCSA which I find a lot of people are saying that they didn't receive the email about the change to the online portal and so on and so forth so you're going to go through this process and you're going to create an account and then they will send you I can't do this because I've already got an account, but that's what you need to do. Okay, but if you already have an account and you um, forgot, the, there was an email that went around to say that um, that um, you need to reset your password because of the change to the portal, they're requiring everyone to reset their password. So what you want to do in there is you want to put your ID number or your username for in this matter in here and you want to say forget username or password and you should then get an email requesting you uh, or giving you a link to the page where you're going to reset your password. Now, some people might, and this is why it's so important to always make sure that you maintain the correct contact details with the HPCSA. If you've maybe used your work email before or your email address has changed or whatever the case may be, you won't get that email from the HPCSA. If you've never changed your email address and you know that for certain, and you've never received HPCSA communication, it's important that you go in and check in your email, in your spam box, um, and especially in Gmail, in the promotions tab, if maybe the 
the CSA emails are not landing in those. And the way that you can do that is in your search bar, in your email, you can type in the email address info at hpcsa.co.za and search in both your inbox, in your spam and in your promotions tabs and see if any emails come up. And if you find that emails are going into your spam or promotions tab, then you want to mark it as not spam or you want to move it into your primary in inbox so that Gmail's AI will learn that that is actually an email that you want to receive in your primary email box. So once you've said forget password or username and you've managed to reset, it takes you to reset your password, you'll then come back here and you will log into your account. So I'm just going to log into my account quickly. Um, and it will ask you to mark, say that you're not a robot and it will take you to this page. Now, on this page is where you will find all the information you need. You don't need that other website at all. This is what you need to be on. And I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more changes that will be coming to this. This is where you can update your account settings. That's your contact information, your addresses, your email, all of that stuff. So you wanna go in there and make sure that all that information is correct. This is where you can download your HPCSA certificate. And this is where you're going to upload your CPDs. If you have not yet renewed your account and you're wanting to pay your invoices, you can go and find your account statements here, your invoices here. So if you go to my invoices, it will, it's already said there, it will give you the details. If this was not paid, there will be a button here that says pay now, and then it will give you the option to pay online. So that is how you're going to pay your fees. So if you ever navigate to another section of this page and you like, how do I get back here? Because that is another problem with this website. It's not very intuitive to like, where do you now find that page again? It's always gonna be under account overviews. So you just click on account overview or you can go to your name there and click on account overview and that's where you will find your information. So we've accessed the system, we've paid our invoices, we've downloaded our certificate, and now there's this issue of the CPD. So you're gonna click on my CPDs and it's going to show you registration and tell you whether you are CPD compliant or not. Now I've already uploaded all my certificates. I know I'm definitely compliant, but as with everybody, these, the review process is taking some time. So I'm currently not compliant. If I click here, it will list all of the points that have already been reviewed as they review it, because I've done it multiple times, not just all in one, as they review my requests, um, the numbers will start telling up here. And once it's noticed, not it notices that my total CPD points is 60, then I will become compliant. So one thing to note, a question that has come up is, um, what if you have more than 10 ethical points, um, but less than, um, less than, what is it? So we need, we need 60 CPD points of which 10 needs to be ethical points, right? Which means that you need 50 and 10. And so people have been asking, but what if I have 50 um, clinical points and I have less than 50 clinical points and I have more than 10 ethical points? That doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you have more than 10 ethical points if your total CPD points is 60, as long as you have a minimum of 10 of that is ethical points, you would still be compliant. So you now need to add your new CPD and it's going to take you to this page where it's going to ask you to, sub, to submit this information. Now, some people have been trying to submit like all the certificates in one go and then the session times out and they have to redo it all over again. So I would recommend you do like maybe three or four at a time, and then you can carry on from there. One thing to note though, is that um, another issue with the website is that uh, you won't notice it now because I'm actually uh, haven't submitted, but let's say you fill in here, you put the name of your service provider. So for example, I recently did the sensory intelligence course. So I would put in here the sensory intelligence consulting as the provider. The description will be the name of the course. Accreditation number will be on your certificate that they send you. Activity start and end date. Obviously, if it's like a two-hour workshop, you put the same date there and there. 
um, CPD tuck. Now, some people have been asking, but what if the course you did has got both clinical and ethical points? So for example, with my sensory intelligence course, it had one ethical point and 29 clinical points. Then you just submit the same information twice. The first time I submitted all the information, I said clinical, and then I put in 29 and uploaded the certificate. And then I added a new CPD activity and I put the same information, but then this time I said ethical and I put one point and I uploaded the certificate. So this is what I wanted to point out to you. As you add new CPD, you will notice that there's a screen within a screen. Now, some people are struggling because they're like, okay, well, I submitted all my information, but now how do I get back? Because, that, because now your mouse is out there and you're scrolling up and you're like, well, how do I get back to submit? So what you need to do is you'll notice you've got this bar on the side here, but you've also got a scroll on the inside of the page. You need to make sure you scroll up there and that's when you're going to click submit. Um, obviously, I can't submit now because I haven't filled anything in. But let's say I submit, it will tell you what information you haven't filled in. And it will then take you to a page where it will show you a list. So for each time that you click submit, it's going to almost create a new case number where, or a request or a, a review request. And it's going to tell you the date and then when it was and when it was requested and it will say pending review. So so on my list, it will have like I think it's three or four different um, uh, review requests and they are all pending. This is another issue with the HPCSA portal is that they don't give you anywhere on this page. I've looked and searched, maybe somebody else has found it, where you can actually access your pending reviews. So if I go back to my account overview, what they should really do is have under service requests, they should have those, those um, CPD that you've submitted and is pending review, they should have that listed here so that you can see and keep track because now what happens is maybe I've, because I am way more than 60 CPD points, I've, I've done lots of little courses and things and now I've uploaded them and I've been ticking them off as I've been uploading them. But what if I didn't do that? Now I can't remember what I've uploaded, what I didn't upload. And there's no way for me to go and check what did I already upload. There's actually no history of what did did I actually submit? I have no proof that I've submitted anything. I don't know if I've submitted anything. I don't know what's going on. And that is one of the issues that I feel is with the HPCSA. So my suggestion to them, if any of them are listening, <laughs> is to have um, the list of your CPD uploads that are pending listed here, or at least under the My CPDs to actually have listed on this page, if you click to proceed, have listed here, um, your CPD queries. If you click on CPD query, that just takes you to a contact page. So that's basically how you are going to upload your, um, your information. And once you are done, you can just log out. And that's it. But wait, 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 don't go yet. Remember, I did say to stay till the end because there are even more changes coming to CPD. If you think that this um, whole nightmare of now needing to upload your your things and the new system and all of that is a big change. This is a walk in the park. There are even bigger changes that are coming. It's inevitable and it's good to stay um, in the loop of what's happening. The reason I know about what's been happening, the information is on the HPCSA website, but the reason why I was I'm I'm aware that it's happening is because Otaza actually um, presented it in the um, annual review webinar that they had as, a, as an Otaza member, I attended that. And that's where I heard about it for the first time, but it is actually available on the website. So if you go back to the home page after you've logged out and you go to CPD, um, it will take you to the information page about CPD. And um, CPD is where they talk about the points and all of that. And then there's this little thing here called maintenance of licensure. And I would advise you all to go to the website and go and read everything that it says here, um, where it talks about the HPCSA decided that they wanted to develop the system to enhance the current CPD program. And so the three professional boards that volunteer to participate in the development of the program, uh, one of them being the OT Medical 
or orthotics, prosthetics and arts therapy board as well as medical technology and the medical dental and medical sciences board they actually volunteered to be part of the process of developing it mainly because uh, the OT board has always been of the had the attitude of well we want to have our voices in there so that we can have a say rather than have things happen to us because the HPCSA was going to implement a change anyway they saw the need to um, revamp the CPD program and so these three boards were part of that process so if you go down to the bottom here you can actually click on this link and it will take you to the power or let you download the powerpoint presentation which i'm going to open now now this powerpoint presentation um it's you'll see uh if i go to the very top uh, you'll see it's a presentation that talks about the integrated model of CPD and maintenance of licensure. There was, I'm not going to go through the whole presentation, you can go through it, but essentially um, there was a recogni recognized the, the need or identified that the current um, way that the CPD um, process is working um, was not really... Um, uh, outcomes based uh, or it was it didn't really improve on practice and outcomes it was very much just an, a numbers game getting the points um, and it didn't show um, enough genuine learning and didn't enable improvement of or doesn't enable improvement of professional competence and performance so what they are wanting to move towards is that they are saying that currently CPD requires us to record our number of credits and that um, there is a need to move from engaging with CPD because it's mandatory to using it as a way for improving practice and they are saying that currently many of us are only meeting the mandatory CPD um, opportunistically and casually and not really um, doing CPD for the purpose of actually improving our practice. And so they, that what they're wanting to do is us, for us to, going forward, not just have points, but actually engage in learning activities that actually results in significant changes in our practice and patient outcomes. And what they are looking to do that, the, how they are looking to do that is through a process of um, individualized learning plans. So they're looking at engagement engagement with this model of CPD requiring practitioners to demonstrate knowledge and performance in order to maintain a license to practice. So having a certificate with a number of points on is not going to be enough. And essentially what they are wanting to do is reflect, want us to reflect, show that we reflect on our own practice and they are, and this is going to be done through an individualized learning plan. So we will each be required to develop our own individualized learning plan, much like you have in a workplace where you have key performance indicators or in the schools we have the IQMS, where you essentially have to develop, you will have to use um, these different domains, professionalism, safety and quality, communication, knowledge, and, knowledge skills and performance. And we'll have to identify in each of these four domains what our gaps in our competence and knowledge is or areas for development and through that develop our own individualized learning plan by determining what our learning needs are and then based on our individualized learning plan we will have to engage in a range of CPD um, activities that actually fits with that plan and so they've listed in this presentation a whole lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, but essentially, what they are wanting us to do is actually show that what activities we are doing all is in line with what we feel we need to do to improve how we actually show up in our profession. So um, this is most likely going to be in the form of a portfolio, much like they do in New Zealand. I know... Many, many moons ago, uh, or I should say four children ago, when we were considering moving to New Zealand and I was looking into application into New Zealand registration, 
Um, they don't do CPD points, guys. They have to actually do exactly what HPCSA is proposing here. You have to actually maintain a portfolio of work and show show that you are constantly improving in competence. And these are kind of the time frames frames they look at looking at where maintenance of licensure will be over a five year cyclical period period. Um, so annually um, you will still be assessed on number of credits, but you need to meet all the requirements, all annual requirements um, over a five year period to maintain your license. Um, so I would say that you guys need to keep your ears and eyes on the ground to know what is happening with the CPD process. Take it in your stride. Um, I, I mean, I think it is coming from a good place with, um, you know, keeping the public in mind. I just hope that um, they implement it in such a way that it doesn't become a financial burden on us in order to actually um, remain compliant. Uh, because I think that is the biggest issue, especially in a time with such high unemployment or when practices are not private practices are not doing well, that it is difficult to maintain CPD um, when you when a lot of the times uh, doing CPD activities um, cost money. So I hope that you found this um, information helpful. Um, if anybody has any trouble or questions, I've seen people deactivate the accounts, all of that. Um, do feel free to reach out to me on the Private Practice Growth Club Facebook page. You can direct message me via there and I will see if I can help you out.